Leak code question 70, climbing stairs. So you're climbing a staircase. It takes N steps to reach the top. Each time you can either climb one or two steps. In how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? So the question is asking for distinct ways, the maximum amount of ways you can climb a stairs using either one or two steps. So that suggests it's going to be dynamic programming. So it's a pretty straightforward question. N is equal to two. So there are two ways to climb to step two, one step, plus one step or two steps. So let's have a look at an example. So with dynamic programming, you can use one of two methods. You can use a top-down approach, which is going to be recursion and memoization, or there's bottom-up. And what we're going to look at today is bottom-up because it's the simplest to understand with this question. So we have five stairs here. One, two, three, four, five. We start off at this position and we want to get to this position. And we want to know the distinct ways we can climb this staircase to reach this value here. With DP bottom up solution, what we can do is create some base cases to start off this chain of events. Because what dynamic program ultimately does is it calculates the solution to get to one. It calculates the solution to get to two. So how many ways are there to get to two, to three, to four. And then it uses previous values from previous solutions in order to computate the new solution. And then it'll do that until we get to the top. Let's create these base cases. It's pretty straightforward. So how many ways are there to get to one? DP of one, it's going to be one way, right? We can take one step. DP of two, so how many ways are there to get to step two? Well, you can take one step and then another step. So that's one way. Or you can take two steps and that's another way. So DP of two is equal to two. Now we have some base cases, right? But let's carry on this. Let's see how many how many steps it takes to get to DP of three. So DP of three. So we can say this one takes one way to get to there. This one takes two ways. So how many ways to get to step three? Well, we can take one step, another step, and another step. That's one way. We can take two steps and then one step. Or we can take one step and then two steps. So that's three ways, right? So three ways. Now you can notice a pattern. Take these as base cases, right? So say those are base cases. In order to compute the maximum distinct ways that we can get from this point to step three, we can simply add the previous two values together, or the previous two solutions, shall I say, together. And that is going to give us the answer for this position. And this is called the optimal substructure. So it can be used to calculate four now. So how many distinct ways are there to get to step four? Well, it's the solution to the ways to get to step three plus the solution to the ways to get to step two. So that's five. And then for step five, it's going to be five plus three, which is eight. And that's the answer we're looking for. So time complexity for this algorithm is O of N, where N is the number of stairs that we need to go to. And then space is also O of N because we're going to be storing each individual step or the solution to each individual step within DP array. So let DP, so we're creating this DP array. We're going to initialize DP of one is equal to one because there's one way to get to step one. DP of two is equal to two because there are two ways to get to step two. And then we carry out the loop. So we need to go up to and include in the nth value, increment the for loop. And here we create the optimal substructure. So dp of i is equal to dp of i minus one. So the previous step solution plus dp of i minus two, the solution to two steps back. And then we can return this value. So if you've done Fibonacci sequence before, it's pretty much the exact same as this, but just reworded, right? So they have the same optimal substructure. Okay, let's submit it. And there you have it.